Welcome to DPV, I'm Josh, and on this episode, we're gonna try to get this 1936 Chevy. It's been sitting here, I don't know, 50 years? Uh, we're gonna try to get it running. This old truck was here when we bought the property and might be one of the reasons why I said yes to buying the property because this sweet old truck was part of the deal. Uh, it's probably, I don't know, 85% complete. Eh, that might be optimistic. But uh, yeah, we do, oh, we're missing floors, missing steering wheel, missing some glass. I do have this door though, it's right there. Um, looks like we need some tires. Can't tell that it, it is a late 36, because uh, early 36, the whole back of the cab was held together with wood. They still use some wood. You can see up front there, um, that's what the doors are screwed to. But early 36, this had like a square cab corner, and it was all hooked together with wood. So this is late 36. Our biggest issue is right there. Who knows how long that has been missing and the hood. I'm giving ourselves probably like a 50% chance of getting this thing running and probably only like an eight and a half percent chance of getting it running without pulling the head. Good news is spark plugs are still in it. That might be the only good news, but um, let's see. Water pump turns. I have not tried to turn it over and today I'm not going to try. So what we're gonna to do today is soak down those spark plugs so we can get them broke loose, pull this valve cover off, um, spray all the starter linkage and shift linkage and that kind of stuff with blaster and dump some marble down the cylinders. Let's get that rolling and uh, pulling the plug should tell us part of the story. Huh. Missing a nut there. Generator's there. Probably needs replaced. Those are the mechanical brakes. Oh, well, maybe it's got juice brakes actually. Look at that. It's a hard line. Anything else we should spray? Might as well. This is probably all I have to come off at some point. Probably not a good sign. That's uh, pretty nasty. Come. <sighs> no. Pretty bad rust there. Or rust. This thing's locked up. I bet you. Hey. Oh, look at that one. That's like not bad considering what the other ones look like. Always got to be one. Empty? Okay. That's probably not a good sign. What's in it? That's exactly what I didn't want to do. All right. 
I was gonna dump a bunch of that marble down right here, but I think what I'm going to do is hold off for today and I'm gonna come out here in about a week and I'll bring the generator out and uh, the shop back. I like to vacuum that crap up before I get it all wet and then douse that all down. But it's actually not as bad as I was expecting. I, I was expecting all that valve, all the rockers and stuff to be all pitted, but they're just dry. So that I think is a good sign. Broken plug sucks. The cylinders are obviously full of crap. Yeah, we've got some work to do, but it's not hopeless. All right, I'm gonna put the valve cover back on and get this motor tarped up because you know, when you start the old resurrection process, you wanna stop introducing bad into it. So we wanna stop this from getting any more moisture, uh, dirt, that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna throw a tarp over it. Uh, so let that marble hopefully do some work over the next week. Um, then I will check the oil again, see if uh, dipstick's wet. That'll tell us, you know, did any of that stuff seep down in there and I'll pop off the cylinders again. And I think about three weeks, Alex is coming up. I'm gonna try to get this thing running. All right, it's been a couple weeks. Um, coming back out here to top off the cylinders again, if they've moved at all. Um, I just checked the oil. Uh, it's still not even on the dipstick, so maybe none of that is run through. And then I got a square out to try to get that plug out. And I also brought out the generator and the shot back. There's a lifter soaking. I might travel down there. All right, I'm gonna run back to the house and grab a drill and a drill bit because uh, I gotta get a hole started in that start in that spark plug. Uh, I can't get the square out in there, so got her soaked down pretty good. Hopefully that helps. Definitely got to get that back cylinder soaking though, otherwise it's probably going to be in even more trouble than, than we're already in. Oh, sweet. That was easy. All right, this tool here is a square out. I didn't know what this was until we worked on that Bronco. Um, but now I have a set. They're pretty sweet. They have, uh, you can see... There's like sharp edges on there, so when you jam it in the hole, see it's tapered. You can jam it in the hole and rotate it in the counterclockwise direction. Those teeth dig in. Hopefully we can get that uh, spark plug out. Wish I would have grabbed a smaller freaking hammer. Oh, that size is too big. Got a smaller hammer.
Check it out. Got her. That's awesome. Is there an end to that cylinder? That's, I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. All right, well, I just dumped a bunch of diesel down the intake. Uh, that number six cylinder, when I dumped diesel down it, it was going straight into the oil pan, and then I discovered there's no drain plug on the oil pan. So that's probably not good. But I think I'm gonna tarp it up for the day, and hopefully when Alex comes, we'll get this thing running. Uh, leave a comment down below. What's the likelihood of this thing happening? All right, see you in a few days. All right, Alex is here. Truck's been soaking for a few weeks. So, uh, think we got a chance of this? <laughs> <laughs> I gave us a 50% chance of getting it running. 17% chance that we get it running without pulling the head. I, yeah, lower your expectations. <sighs> I did notice this whole like front end though is kind of... Loosey goosey? Loosey goosey, I think we okay. can... Uh, It'll give us a little more room. Yeah. We'll pull that, and then I think our game plan is we're going to pull this intake because it's full of junk, and that'll give us kind of a line of sight into the cylinders. Um, and uh, then we'll kind of decide from there if we need to pull the head. We're likely pulling the head in about 30 minutes. <laughs> Alex went shopping at his dad's place, and... Uh, Hopefully we have the right cap. Yeah. Got all the new electrical stuff. Couldn't find a starter, so we're gonna have to pull that off and get it cleaned up. I just found a coil at the house and it is, it tests out good, so I think we're good there. Time to start ripping and tearing. So we're gonna make our own penetrating fluid today. Get yourself a spray bottle and uh, two ingredient, ATF, acetone, one to one. Super easy mix ratio. Open acetone. Do I need a funnel? Probably. Probably should have had a funnel. There's a funnel in the back. I mean, I've already started. Hair over 15, it's about 16, I think. ATF, whatever's your cheapest flavor. Got a whole bunch of Type F from, uh, from Grandpa, so I threw, I'm gonna throw some Type F in there. Now this will separate, so before you use it each time, you should give it an old shaky shake. But you can see that it'll like, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but there's like two colors there. And then, there you go. There we go. I mean, they're coming out really easy. <laughs> Josh has doomed us. We've been working for 10 minutes and Josh is already like, already has guaranteed that we aren't gonna get any farther than that. That, in, that intake's gonna be welded on there. Ooh, you got the, got the starter out. Right on. Sweet, dude. I don't think those are, that's all supposed to be in there. I don't think so. There's a bunch of confetti. Holy cow. This keeps coming. Ah, make sure they're not completely full of crap. Because they probably are. So, I guess that's what I'm doing. Arms. Dude. What? I 
I just pulled these two screws. Look at this. I just pulled these two screws off. What? They just like walked out. Dude, <coughs> all the bolts are out. Just when you're going to use it, just give it a quick shake right there. It's fine. What? It's fine. Is it not fine? It'll it'll be fine. <laughs> what is it? I mean, oh, it's just completely full. So the head's coming off. Where's the uh That looks like it's at an angle. All right. Gonna have to pull the head. Make sure those cylinders aren't completely. Eh, make sure they're not completely full of crap. Because they probably are. So, I guess that's what I'm doing next. Pulling the heads off. Head off. Nice. Look at all that crap. Got one part of the valve train half off. That pin goes that way, I think. So this is the foot pedal switch basically it goes on the starter here like so like so this way so as you put your foot down on the inside it pushes this down but I'm pretty sure it's frozen in the down position so we will take our handy dandy fluke here put it on ohms Listen for a beep. So that's where you're gonna hook your positive cable is on there. And then, yep, we're good. And we're down to one ohm, that's good. All right, so there. So I'm pretty sure that is gonna be, oh, there's like a spot to like add oil to your starter. All right. Recording? Mm hmm She locked up. <laughs> something's, something's dirty. But it, it's spinning here. Yeah, the motor might be locked up though. So these wires weren't connected to anything, and so, at least as far as I could tell, pretty sure they're supposed to tie the two positives together. So two of these are negative, because they're grounded, and then two of them are hot. And so they're supposed to, I believe, tie the two hots together. At least that's the best I can see. So we're going to do that with a butt splice. It seemed like on some of the Rebo kits I saw for the starter, these wires were either, they weren't tied together or it only had like one spot for one screw. But these wires are tied together down inside the starter. Jennings Motorsports, if you're watching this, let us know if we did this wrong. I'm going to double check this, make sure. Okay, now they have a continuity between them. Mm, yep, it just slams right in there. Get you right in the thumb. Yeah, you, that's, that's how you know it's good. Required a blood sacrifice, apparently. Pop it. Reach through the bottom. In, in. There. Three and one does not specifically list 1937 Chevy starters, but it's three things, so that probably is one of the three things. I mean, 
Okay. Try this again. Here goes nothing. Here goes nothing. No freaking way, dude. <laughs> so, uh. with um, literally no parts, we've uh, got the starter running. That's that is so cool. We are farther than I thought we'd make today. <laughs> Sweet. Other one. Oh. The old motors with like the big old inspection covers. You have to pull the, no, no, you just gotta move the cab back a little bit faster. Is the cab back okay? I mean, I think all the body weight is gonna be gone. Ooh, there's gaskets on those. Ooh, okay. They go this Save way. Save on those. Save on those. We're not gonna be able to find them downtown. Oh, dude. That's you're getting a bunch of junk in the engine. <laughs> so, yeah, this is going to just be an RTV job. Yeah. You got some? Yeah. That'll be like after it fires off, then we'll worry about... Oh, RTV. yeah, we can we can probably fire it off without this on, huh? Yeah. I think we'll want to. We'll want to see if those lifters are... Moving? Moving. And this might be bad, but you know what? It'll run off four. Oh yeah. Holy crap. That's that's no good. But a couple of those cylinder walls don't look all that shabby. That is insane. That one's so bad. Is that an oil pass? Is this an oil passage? Are these supposed to be? Mm -hmm. Did you watch any literature or information on this before? Not really. Sweet. <laughs> that cylinder is done. Oh, there's no piston. Really? Yeah. What? We're done. We're not done. What do you mean? We're gonna run it on five? So, I don't think we have a cylinder head. There's no piston in there. Yeah, or no piston, I mean. I said Are these there. steel pistons? I don't have a magnet on me. There it is, though. I know when I dumped uh, marble on that one, yeah, it, came it went the... straight to the pan. That's probably why, because of that hole. You know what we could probably do? We get some of that um, that steel putty. We make up a little. Yeah. <laughs> There's a piston. Wow. So I mean, a couple of them are good. Is that? We don't really have to. Is that the back one? This one. The yeah. one that's really. The really bad one is the one we don't have to worry about. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I said that like I knew which one of those two were the intake versus the exhaust. I have no idea. That one didn't move. Nope. 
That one did. Here, let's get some. Which one didn't move? Uh, this one. And this one's not coming back up. You just squirt them all. Let's soak while we go. What are we getting? Pry bar. Pry bar. Camera battery. Block of wood. The reason that the cylinder did is because of the intake and no carburetor. Dude, that valve is gone. Oh, wow. Yikes. What did that one? Mushroom it out and then. I was tapping lightly. Oh, yeah. Well, that valve's non-existent. Yeah. Well, we're uh, going to take this head apart and see if any of these valves can be saved. This might put us dead in the water for today. Unless we can find some valves over town. But I'm going to wire wheel these things and see if I can clean them up. Oh, man. That's hard to even say without laughing. But... Couple of them, they just broke off like that one, that one. But we'll get this disassembled and uh, see if we're gonna get lucky at all. All right, this is where we're at. Uh, got the head all tore apart, and we are now down to three exhaust valves, which is an issue. Plenty of intake valves. Yeah, we got enough intake valves to make it run. And our, so our goal is, our plan is to try to get as many cylinders back together as we can. And the valves might not go in the same spot because of the broken ones. But, mm -hmm. uh, couple yeah. like, like, look how bad that is. But then mm -hmm. that one, this was the one that the cylinder, the piston is gone. Or wait, this one. Yeah. This is the one that the cylinder, like, the piston is gone. But it's because this was open. Yeah. Just letting water in. So, yeah, we have several of them, the end just popped right off. So I think what we're gonna do now is go try to get that engine to rotate um, and figure out which cylinders look the best. And then we'll determine which uh, valves we'll put in to run off those cylinders. Yeah, it's not looking great. We don't know what's in the bottom, like there was no drain pan in it, right? Yeah. Can we jack it up? How hard it would be to pull the, use the zip gun. Pull the pan. Pull the pan, just look at, if the bottom is just one rusty. Yeah.
just too many things yeah. were against us. It was locked up real tight, uh, missing the top of a piston. This uh, piston just broke when we were trying to spin it. When you pull the head and the valve stem has rusted all the way through, it's it's bad. Yeah, kind of a lost cause. But uh, this isn't the last time you'll see this old truck. I'm not 100% sure what my plans are. It might be a yard art fruit stand for our farm. Might be a rat rod and might try to find another inline six. I'm not sure, but uh, we did get it kind of up out of its grave, out of the dirt. Um, all four wheels are locked up. So it's gonna take a bit of work to get this old girl um, rolling again, but. Good news, you got a starter that works. Starter works. I mean. And I think it's been here for 60 or 70 years. So, yeah, just, uh, when it's left out that long with no hood, no carb, the odds were against us for sure. Yep. But anyway, hey, let us know in the comments, do you like these revivals? We sure like doing them. Love it. Um, and we've got more coming, so. Uh, Whether you like them or not, they're coming. <laughs> <laughs> because we like them. Um, yeah. Anyway, hey, we've got merch. Uh, we're doing our own merch now, so the link for this, that store is down below in the description. And to, to get behind the scenes content and be up to date with what we are doing, uh, join our mailing list. So I try to get weekly updates out to you guys and that's how you're going to be able to find out you know like under power tour other events we're putting on other events that we're trying to go to if you want to know where we're at what we're doing get on that mailing list it's the best way to um get a hold of us and stay in touch we'll wreck it wrench and repeat till next time see ya